the debate. The debate. I just finished watching the whole thing because, again, I was in the field. Um, I have <laughs> some serious takeaways. First of all, first of all, Bernie Sanders mentioned it kind of briefly, kind of briefly. But at some point, we're going to have to start talking about serious, serious media regulation in this country. Because CNN, I mean, we already know this, is not a media outlet. CNN serves at the pleasure of the establishment. So does MSNBC. And it is mind-boggling. Yes, by the polls, Elizabeth Warren has now come out as a front-runner by the polls. And a lot of those polls are fishy, as we report on here all the time. But for Elizabeth Warren to get, I think she got 13 or so minutes, and Bernie Sanders, who's in the top three, got like six and a half, I believe. I mean, and and you want to argue that you haven't been propping up Elizabeth Warren for months? I mean, almost every time, yes, she did get a lot of attacks, but they even gave her a chance to respond even when she wasn't even mentioned by other candidates. Meanwhile... I clocked it at a good 40 minutes. Bernie Sanders did not speak at all. And you could tell when CNN is trying to elevate some, trying to give life support to some, CNN is a disgrace. Frankly, uh, I'm not going to lead the protests, but I think there needs to be protests outside CNN and MSNBC. You give Elizabeth Warren 13 and a half minutes. You clearly, clearly were trying to elevate the likes of Amy Klobuchar. You're trying to elevate the likes of Cory Booker and basically, you know, resuscitate these dying campaigns. Meanwhile, you cut off Tulsi Gabbard very clearly before she could have another Tulsi Slayer moment like she did to Kamala Harris in that, was it the second debate? Towards Elizabeth Warren. Tulsi Gabbard teed up A question for Elizabeth Warren, you know, what would you do on foreign policy? And Elizabeth Warren gives a lot of talking points that Barack Obama gave as a candidate. We need to get out of the Middle East. We need to do this. We need to do that. And nothing happened. Before Tulsi Gabbard could have a chance to respond and have a moment to be like, uh, you have a plan for everything, but not this. You seem to basically be reciting talking points of every Democratic candidate, but... There's never any follow-through. CNN cut her off. So, obviously, you can't call it a debate if it's rigged in the first place, and the debate was rigged. And I think, I'm not just saying this as a Bernie Sanders supporter, I'm just saying this as uh, somebody who's watched Bernie, I think Bernie finally came breathing fire. And he, I think, put all questions about his health uh, to bed, frankly. I mean, obviously, we'll see how much he campaigns, all that. But I don't mind if he goes from four events a day to two. I mean, he shouldn't. Frankly, that's a, that was way too much in the first place. I mean, they were, it, you could tell they're trying desperately to, like, tee up an easy question for Beto O'Rourke. But the problem is Beto O'Rourke puts you to sleep. There's no there there. They were trying to give more time to Mayor Pete. The problem is there's no there there. They're probably, they're trying to give more time to Amy Klobuchar. The problem is there is there there. Establishment Joe Biden as a female version. That's what she is. They're trying to breathe life into Julian Castro. But if you look at the polls, Bernie Sanders gets less time than a lot of these establishment candidates polling at four, three or four percent. And frankly, sorry to offend, I'm not part of the Yang gang, but he was getting equal to if not more time than Bernie was getting. I think Yang should get a good amount of time because Yang has shown he has a grassroots movement behind him, the Yang gang. And I respect that. He's not my candidate, but I respect his supporters and all that. But, I mean, the debates are rigged, and I think uh, Bernie supporters in particular, but Tulsi supporters too, should be outside CNN peacefully, peacefully. But you can't have a fair contest of ideas if the whole format itself is rigged. And you also can't convince me that Tom Perez and the DNC and CNN didn't widen the net to allow Tom Steyer in and uh, other establishment candidates that frankly, Tulsi Gabbard is polling better in 
New Hampshire than a lot of these other candidates like Castro and Klobuchar. Why are they in the debate rather than on the chopping floor, chopping board, like Tulsi Gabbard missed the last debate? Nobody could answer this. No one. There should not be 12 candidates at all in any debate. Frankly, there should not be 10. It sh they should have done two debates, six each, because it's intentionally meant for two things. Number one, to make sure Joe Biden talks as little as possible, and I'm about to show you what I think was his biggest doozy of the night, and to make sure that Elizabeth Warren doesn't get attacked too much because there's too many candidates, and it, it's to protect the establishment's choice. And we're going to get to who needs to drop out because there are some folks who need to drop out. So I'm going to go through the list. First off, to me, the biggest story was actually not Bernie Sanders. As much as a great debate as he had, the biggest story to me is this. I think Joe Biden, I mean, you have enough examples now. You have enough, of course, the, you know, CNN, oh, Joe Biden did a good job. But no one with two eyes thinks Joe Biden is ready for prime time. Nobody with two eyes thinks Joe Biden is a leading candidate anymore. He cannot construct full sentences together. You want to talk about who is more reliability health-wise? Joe Biden. I mean, I'll, I'll just play you one doozy right here. And the Kurds have announced a new deal with the government in Damascus, a victory for Syrian dictator Bashar al-Assad and Russia and Iran. Vice President Biden, we know you would not have withdrawn troops from northern Syria in this way, but that is already in process. So would you send American troops back into northern Syria to prevent an ISIS resurgence and protect our Kurdish allies? I would not have withdrawn the troops and I would not have drawn the additional thousand troops who are in Iraq, which are in retreat now, being fired on by, a shot, by Assad's people and the president of the United States saying, if those if those ISIS folks escape from the prisons they're in, they'll only go to Europe and won't affect us. It has been the most shameful thing that, I've, that any president has done in modern history, <clears throat> excuse me, in terms of foreign policy. And the fact of the matter is, I've never seen a time, and I've spent thousands of hours in the Situation Room, I've spent many hours on the ground in those very places in Syria and in Iraq. So, you know, uh, I don't want to expose you to any more of that, and apologies, I, I forgot to change the setting. Uh, Joe Biden, I, I, I don't mean this to be uh, cruel, but Joe Biden can't complete full sentences without stuttering like this. You saw his lip like that. Without coughing, without something. He's, he's just not cognitively sharp. And you need to be cognitively sharp to defeat a growing... I mean, let's call Trump what he is. He's, he's a fascist, okay? And now we have news that they're going to have the next G7 at his resort? Oh, my God. Could you imagine? Could you imagine if that was a progressive having hit the G20 at his resort? So Biden, I think, and it's already shown because Warren in a lot of the polls has moved past Biden, and Biden is now kind of closer to Bernie I think Biden's going to keep falling because he can't, he cannot construct full sentences. He also confused, he said, uh, we need to get out of Iraq. Oh, I mean Afghanistan. I mean, this is a disaster, a disaster. Not to mention, not to mention, uh, no wonder, no wonder if you have no plans that help working people you're struggling financially. Joe Biden's bleeding cash. Spent nearly a million on private jets. And this is someone who's going to defeat Donald Trump? Private jet Joe? Joe Biden's campaign is bleeding cash. And a big reason why appears to be an antiquated, higher-end approach to electoral politics. Biden's team spent more than $923,000, almost a million dollars, on private jets during the last three months. He also, the former vice president spent more than 230,000 on fundraising consultants during quarter three, nearly 500,000 on direct mail and major chunks of change on high-end hotels in cities that serve as donor hubs, but aren't centrally located in early voting states. 
During the third quarter period, the Biden campaign spent more than 20000 at the Carlisle Hotel, very fancy here in New York, more than 14000 at the Coronado Island in San Diego, more than 4400 at the Hotel Jerome in Espen, and more than 10500 at the W in L.A. Uh, yeah, that's how you beat Donald Trump. Let's just flaunt that we are the bourgeoisie. Private jets, nice hotels, and three, almost $300,000 on fundraising consultants. Fundraising cons- You need consultants to tell you how to fundraise? Here's how you fundraise. Medicare for all, free public college, a, a strong Green New Deal, a significant wealth tax, doubling union membership, Bernie Sanders raised more money than any other presidential candidate, say it with me, in history. Joe Biden can't fundraise because Joe Biden has no ideas. He's got no ideas. None. I think Joe Biden, as you clearly are seeing, this is now the fourth debate. He cannot construct full sentences fully. He is not sharp. He has no ideas. And his campaign is bleeding cash. He is running basically Hillary Clinton's campaign, which spent more time fundraising in key periods than actually doing rallies. And why doesn't he want to do rallies? Because he has no ideas. He's running to restore the soul of the nation. Well, maybe people don't want to restore things back to the way it was, which was still the most grotesque income inequality in the world. I think we rank second or third in the world in income inequality. Child poverty out of control, homelessness, out of control, uninsurance, uninsured, out of control. Restoring back to the way things were is not a bumper sticker. So why I say Joe Biden is the biggest story is because I think as Biden shrinks, I think you're going to see a lot more of those votes go to Bernie Sanders than Elizabeth Warren. And here's why, if you remember this moment from the debate. The question is, how, who's going to be able to get it done? How can you get it done? And I'm not suggesting they can't, but I'm suggesting that that's what we should look at. And part of that requires you not being vague. Tell people what it's going to cost, how you're going to do it, and why you're going to do it. That's the way to get it done. Presidents so, are supposed to be able to persuade. Just to clarify, Vice President, who are you saying is being vague? She's being vague on the issue of Actually, both of them being vague on the issue of uh, uh, the uh, uh, Medicare for all. No, look, look, here's the deal. It's, it co- come on. It cost $30 trillion. Guess what? That's over $3 trillion a year. If we, it's more larger than the entire federal budget. Let me finish, okay? You'll, bo- you'll both get in. If you eliminate the entire Pentagon, every single thing, plane, ship, troop, the buildings, everything, satellites, it would get you, it would pay for a total of four months. Four months. Where do you get the rest? Where does it come from? Two things. Let me Senator respond. Sanders, respond. In two ways. Joe, sure. you talked yep. about working with Republicans and getting things done. But you know what you also got done? And I say this as a good friend. You got the disastrous war in Iraq done. No. You got a bankruptcy bill, which is hurting middle class families all over this country. You got trade agreements like NAFTA and PNTR with China done, which have cost us four million jobs. And let's get to Medicare for all. Let's be honest. We spend twice as much per person as do the people of any other major country on earth. And the answer is, if we have the guts, and I would like to see the Democratic Party have that guts, to stand up to the drug companies and the insurance companies and tell them that the function of health care is to guarantee care to all people, not to make $100 billion in profit, if Thank we you, stood together, we could create v- the greatest health care system President Biden, you in can the respond, world. And then Senator Warren. We can do that without Medicare for all. We- this is what I've been calling on Bernie Sanders to do now for, frankly, four years, because he should have gone a lot harder on Hillary Clinton. But I digress. First of all, again, respectfully, Joe Biden can't even remember his attack lines. He's like, well, they're both being vague on, uh, 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 uh. I don't mean anything negative to my old, my older friends, uh, people with memory losses. I have some memory issues, but this guy, imagine him on a stage with Donald Trump. I'm not a fan of Donald Trump. Dangerous man. I mean, what you're seeing, honestly, with this Ukraine stuff, it's legit. I think Russiagate was a lot of malarkey. 
what, what Trump is doing with Ukraine and this Rudy Giuliani clown show, it's legitimate corruption and it needs to be investigated. But he's still a very, very good salesman, Donald Trump is. He's still a dangerous, dangerous communicator. He's going to get out every one of this, any one, every one of his base. You think that guy, Joe Biden, is going to make up the difference? Hillary Clinton had 5% less African Americans come out for her in 2016 than Obama had in 2012. Hillary Clinton had 5% less Latinos come out for her in 2016 than Obama had in 2012. Hillary Clinton had 6% less age 18 to 29. Bernie's core come out for her as opposed to Donald uh, Barack Obama in 2012. You think this guy is going to do that? A lot of cocktail crowd, you know, establishment. Oh, we got to beat Trump people that live in New York, Washington, who are very out of touch and have no idea how much suffering there is out in the middle of the country. They just think, well, Trump's so dangerous, everybody will come out no matter who the Democrat is. That's not how people vote. You might think if you live in New York or D.C. or, or a, a more comfortable urban area, you might think, well, Donald Trump is a, is a, a scare to the world. He is a, a unprecedented threat, and all those people will come out, even if it's Joe Biden. I got news for you, because I've met a lot of these people that are those voters, either who went for Trump or um, are not like rah-rah, vote blue no matter who. They're not coming out for Joe Biden. Frankly, I think you might have some people that decide to vote for Trump instead of Joe Biden, just despite the Democrats. Hope you enjoyed that last video. Hop on over to statuscoup.com where you can sign up for our email list and become a member for as low as five to ten dollars a month. Membership is how we grow. That's statuscoup.com slash join. And remember, join our email list so we can grow the revolution with you. Oh.